Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. It may have been Christmas, but the content continues regardless. Today's scenario was sent in by one of my naval architects, David, and is told, titled Mad Designer. It is, uh, <laughs> it's gonna be fun. In the desperation for newer, more powerful ships to fight the Japanese fleet, Congress has written the Navy a blank check. However, due to the Second London Naval Treaty, designers are in short supply. But one man comes forward claiming that he can make a ship that will render the Japanese Navy obsolete. That man was quickly signed up, but no one could have foreseen the excessive design he had planned. Make a battleship loaded with as many secondaries as possible. Minimum 5-inch, but try the largest amount of high cali higher caliber secondaries as possible. While sporting as many 16-inch centerline guns as possible. Just to make a hellfire of rounds obliterate the enemy fleet. No restrictions on the design. I get only two battleships. The Japanese get three, but they also get an assistance from four heavies, six lights, and four destroyers. So this is going to be a battleship duo of the United States fleet. That's going to be in trouble, at least depending on how I design the ship. Since I have no design limitations, I can make this thing big, I can make it heavy, and most importantly, I can make it very, very expensive. Let's make this thing expensive and large. Super Battleship, 109,000 tons. The enemy starts at 9,000 meter range, which means that I'm going to be taking fire right from the get-go. I'll need to have a lot of armor and probably also the maximum torpedo protection, because if there are DDs spawning at 9,000 meters, or rather the enemy fleet spawning at 9,000 meters, then there is a very high likelihood that I'll at least eat one or two torpedoes, and presumably more. A turning circle would be really nice to get reduced. The thing is that it's not going to be easy to get that done. I would need to invest quite a lot in just shaft and auxiliary engines, and that still has a turning circle of 950. If I reduce speed to 15 knots, I can bring it down to 559, but this is a long ship. I'm not sure if this is the right call, but considering that the designer calls for a lot of secondaries and a lot of mainline 16-inch guns, it's probably the only real choice that I have. I'm going to have to go with a ton of guns. Can I put a barbette in the middle of the ship? No, you can't. Okay, that's unfortunate. Can I put this thing farther forward? No. Okay. Um, I'm just checking to see if I can put a secondary barbette over there. A main or a secondary. Preferably a main. But I don't think that that's going to fly. So I'll probably put a couple of... Um, maybe one main turret here and a bunch of secondary turrets. I now have access to the standard barbette. I want to get a tall barbette for secondaries there. Can I get a similar one running here? No? Really? That's unfortunate. This is as far back, if you will, as I can put the main superstructure. And I only have one modern tower available, so it's not like I can put another case, sorry, barbette up in front. And then throw in another... Uh, see, that's that's what I wanted. Put another secondary barbette there, but that's not happening. Okay, in that case, um, a very tall barbette over there. I don't know if that's big enough for a 16-inch gun to sit. Now, he said as many 16-inch centerline main guns as possible. So that calls for quadruple turrets. This is going to already give me 8 barrels... I'll probably have to upsize this to a enlarged. So there goes the secondary barbette again. There we go. 16 main barrels. Aft weight offset almost 18%. That's pretty substantial. 8.9 still? That's ludicrous. There we go. 4%. Uh, what do I go for next? Electro-hydraulic loaders. Oh, sorry, turrets, auto-loaders. I'll take a coincidence rangefinder, considering fire at short range and a generation 2 radar system. 
I'll give myself a bit of sonar warning, but I don't really have the illusion that I'll be able to avoid any kind of torpedoes. Simply because the enemy starts at such a short range. Now, this is my main setup for now. The next order of business is to add as many minimum 5 inch, but preferably larger secondaries as possible. So let's add a couple of 8s in positions where I can. Of which there aren't that many. It sucks that I cannot put anything up here. Any... No. The alternative is to just tie these things together, and that might give me options. But not even that many, because you can only... Hmm. I would have basically have a huge amount of firepower concentrated on the stern. Which is not really where I want all that. And another problem is that I cannot have enough super firing turrets. Let's go with the tall barbette there. This one's already going to get obstructed by the 8 inch over there. Another 8 inch over there. Um, I think we'll just have to go with 5s over here because those fit. It's optimistic that the game shows me these things as options, but they don't actually fit there. Another 5 triple. Another 5 triple there. I think I might have to invest a bit more when it comes to armor, considering the very short range that we're starting at. Firepower wise, do we need to add more or do we need to go for armor? 20 16 inch guns, 9 8 inch guns, and uh, 42 5 inch guns. But he said minimum 5 inch. That is the requirement. So ideally, more of those things. But I don't really know where to put them. That's my, my problem. I don't know where to put them. Oh, right there. Not there. It extends too far. See, these slots up here, I believe, are for 3-inch guns and 4-inch. And I'm going to put these things on here just to make this thing more American. More guns. Uh, we can probably also put a couple of 2-inchers. Oh, that five's in the way. Okay. Of course we gotta have the triple two-inch guns there. Because I think that a four-inch gun's too big. Yeah, four-inch gun would sit there. Three-inch? Three-inch will. Does that mean I can also put threes in there? Yes. Okay. Firing arcs are not great. But nevertheless, a three-inch gun hits harder than a two-inch gun. Does that go for every slot that I had the 2-inch guns on? Pretty much. Pretty much. I now have another 48 3-inch guns. This should keep destroyers and light cruisers at bay. Heavy cruisers might get taken down by the 8s, and battleships will be on the receiving end of 16-inch guns. The propellant for which will be uh, TNT. And we're going to be firing heavy shells. That gives me about five and a bit tons to put on some more armor. Because I really don't think that I can use any more of the slots here. Because this turret still wants to fire. I want it to be able to shoot. If I put secondaries over here, it's not going to have any kind of firing arc whatsoever. Is there any way I can put this modern tower forward? Yes. That does free up a bit more room here. Still not enough. Well, how are you supposed to use all this deck space here? If I zoom out, you can even see the, the, the massive amount of space that I have here. Let's throw on some more 8s. Because I think that the fives are going to be protecting the ship enough as is. Uh, can I put those over here? 
You come here. Over there. Decent firing arcs. Not obstructing that turret too much. Gives me a total of um, 24 8 inch guns. Oh, sorry, 21 8 inch guns. Yeah, I can probably make that work. Push this thing forward a bit. Get rid of that aft, aft weight offset. How is my roll? How is my roll? Uh, longitudinal weight offset is the point two. Yes. Pitch. Hmm. I think that the game needs to have a bit more of an indicator up here because as somebody pointed out, I always get distracted slash heavily focused on the aft slash four weight offset. But the pitch and the roll can be just as bad. Because the more that you pitch, the more you lose base accuracy. And the same goes for roll. So these things combined will add a lot more of a problem than a bit of an aft weight offset of 0.2%. But there's not that much that I can do. Roll motion, if you add a heavy object across the beam, it will increase the roll and negatively infect or affect the gun accuracy, of course. The same can be said for pitch. So roll is how the ship turns uh, this way and pitch is how the ship turns this way over its own uh, length axis. I don't really know how to cancel those things out. Because currently it's 36 on the roll. That stays when I remove this turret because the, the ship doesn't get any more pitch. I'm oh, sorry, it gets less pitch, uh, but the roll cha does not change. The moment that I take off, for example, these eights, yeah, then the roll changes from 36 to 31. But then again, you need to find a balance between getting a ship that is pretty heavily balanced um, or... I mean, with, let's say, a good balance where everything is centerline. But when you put everything centerline, I couldn't put on these guns here. And all the guns on the superstructure are probably not going to be well received either by the pitch and roll stats. Ah, screw it, we're just going to go with it as is. Considering the range of what we're firing at slash starting at, I think a 10-inch belt is beneficial. Turret armor is going to be particularly important. Secondaries are also going to be taking a lot of fire. Let's reduce armor belt to 10 inch because I'm getting 110% quality buff. So I do start with a nice amount of armor. No, it's too much. 8 inch there. And a bit more on the conning tower. 15 inch. No, we can probably go to 20. 21 even? The conning tower is relatively such a light part of the ship that it doesn't really care too much. One uh, armor point translates into one ton. That's how light the conning, uh, conning tower is relative to the others. Okay, so the sonar one's not possible. It's going to have to be hydro three. Yeah. Okay, this is going to be about it. Let's max out the conning tower. Oh, that's a bit much. A hundred and nine thousand tons out of a hundred and nine thousand tons with an aft weight of set of one percent. This is the North Dakota. Weird design, and I think that that's in line with the scenario. Let's launch it. Three battleships, four heavy cruisers, six lights, and four destroyers. And it looks like these are pretty large battleships. And we're starting right away. What do we have here? I think this is a heavy cruiser. I'm not seeing any torpedo tubes on the ship. That's a good start. What you got there? Same build. Heavy cruiser. Destroyer spotted. Torpedo tubes, port and starboard and stern. Four, four, and five. And it looks like they're already turning. Another destroyer. Same build, of course. 
battleships. 12 centerline main guns. A whole bunch of secondaries, which are either turning or the game threw them in in a weird orientation. These are the heavies, yes. This is another heavy and a separate fleet. These are the light cruisers. Wait. Are those the light cruisers? Then these are the destroyers. Yeah, I misidentified a light cruiser for a destroyer. Uh, the destroyers actually only have two torpedo tubes. So it seems like the light cruisers are more of a threat. That's good to know. I can keep that in mind. Now we are sort of heading away. And I want to continue that pattern. At least until we wipe out some of the light cruisers. Because I don't trust those torpedo flinging things for one instant. There we go. That's the target. 8.6 clicks out. Um, and the mains are going to focus on the battleship. Here we go. What are you guys firing with? Four triple 20 inch guns. Good lord, am I going to be in trouble. <laughs> Look at that wall of secondaries. Look at that wall of secondaries. Bring it. It's going to take me some time to maneuver the turrets into position. Preferably not too long. Because I will be on the receiving end of those 20s and I don't like it. I really don't like it. Come on, give me a couple of good 16 sal or 16 inch salvos. At this range, the 20 inch guns are very dangerous, but as they do with 20 inch guns, they also take a long time to load. So I'll probably throw out a lot more shells with my battleships than they will, but they have more battleships. I have a total of, what was it, 20 barrels per ship? Yeah. 5 turrets times 4 barrels is 20, uh, 20 barrels per ship, so that's 40 barrels total. These guys have 36 20-inch barrels. Not to be underestimated, and as you can see they're still rotating into position. I really hope that I can spot some torpedoes early. And maybe wipe out one of these light cruisers as quickly as possible. Until I get identification on the heavy cruisers and confirm their threat, I don't really find them to be that dangerous. Famous last words. Good lord, this thing is getting hammered. Look at that guy. 17 hits. Three floodings, three fires, two engines damaged, a flash fire. And that's the first kill in less than two minutes. Jeez. Okay. That's a fantastic way to get rid of a couple of 20-inch guns. I did take some return fire. And that hurt. 20-inch shells have hit this ship four times now. And it's starting to show. Because North Dakota is starting to flood. She's been burning a bit. But hopefully, we can pretty quickly repay the favor. And sink the second battleship. Annoy oh dear... Look at the damage that the ship is taking. She's down to 40% with most of the ship on fire. Heavy flooding on the North Dakota. Turn away. The other battleship is taking it as well. Two floodings, five fires and an ammo detonation. But she's still here. And unfortunately at 15, no, make that 12 knots. It's not like the North Dakota is going to turn anytime soon. Keep pushing that battleship. More floodings. I hope that this is going to go quickly because otherwise I'm going to lose one battleship and with that half my firepower. But there is just no angling against these guys, none whatsoever. They have a 99% chance to pen me. Any hits? are bound to hit, or any shots are bound to hit, and pen. Heavy cruiser, not a threat. Come on, can we get another flying turret over here? Flash fires, preferably. This is gonna potentially be over pretty soon. 
Because when I lose the North Dakota, I also lose 20 16-inch barrels, which is substantial. That's a really bad ship. Or a really bad uh, situation for me to be in. We got the Neodo light cruiser. Good torpedoes, good range. But not willing to use them as the Asama is in the way. More flooding on the battleship. It looks like these battleships don't care that much about flooding. That's the problem. I really hope that North Dakota is going to get damage saturated. Because then she can at least take a few more hits. Another flooding. 97% ID. She's halfway gone. There we go. Akagi. 123,900 tons. That's a huge ship. I thought my 109,000 tons was big. But nope. One can go bigger. Akagi, however, is starting to take on water. She has an anti-flood 2. Tandemed with many bulkheads. She's probably not going to care that much. My chance to hit is 36%. Their chance to hit is 38%. Wow. What do you have that I don't? I mean, 20-inch guns generally are slightly more accurate, I think. At, what are we fighting at? 12,000 meter range? 4.9%. Mine? 4.4%. So yeah, they, they're slightly more accurate. Akagi, down to 30%. Flooding in, what, 5 compartments? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Another flooding. So far, the North Dakota is floating, but only just... Floating, but also flooding. Use the secondaries on the Osama, because the Osama is currently really close. More flooding on North Dakota. Use those secondaries. Put the Osama down. Maximum bulkheads, she's not gonna flood. Light cruisers? Maximum bulkheads? Destroyers? Minimum bulkheads, there we go. Somebody had to have minimum. Akagi down to 10%. Maryland is unharmed. Just completely unscratched. Come on, finish the Akagi. Oh crap, she's going to start angling now. That's going to reduce... No, actually, it's relatively increasing my chance to pen her. Surprisingly. But my ricochet chance is probably going to go up to numbers that I don't like. Ship has 3% left. Osama has taken a lot of damage. Starting to flood. Probably the 8 inch guns doing that. Yeah, 8s, 4s, 5s. Another good salvo on the Akagi. But this is going to be the end of the North Dakota. Akagi down to 5%. Buoyancies can cut in half, down to 47%. I really need the Akagi dead, because I might be able to do a 1 versus 1 duel. But a 2 on 1 is problematic. <sighs> that angle, though. I don't like that one bit. Maryland is now also starting to take fire from the other battleship. The Hiryu. North Dakota at 0.6% structural integrity. Thoughts and prayers is what's keeping this ship alive. But in the meanwhile, she has been able to do a lot of damage against the Asama. Oh, crap. That's one heavy cruiser down, but the North Dakota succumbs to structural integrity damage. Come on. High explosive on the Akagi. I'm down to 76% and those 20 inch shells will keep coming. I only need a couple of floods or well, at least a bit of structural damage. And at this angle I'm not going to risk pen. Or ricochet rather. 37 degrees, 36, 35, 34... Uh, 
put your secondaries on the it Itsuki. Structural down to 64%, structural to 4%. Auto selected. Ricochet chance 24 degrees. I'm so busy with trying to figure out where my ship is and what the next target should be, and killing off that last surviving battleship, that I haven't even checked the log for torpedoes, which are probably heading my way. Chitose, for example, launched her torps. Mogami hasn't yet. Come on. Oh. Ow, ow, ow. The ship is fighting with every gun she has. But it looks like the Maryland is just not going to be able to do it. There's just too much firing back at the ship. She's getting ripped apart by the Japanese. We're now down to 38% structural integrity. Akagi is down to 3%. Come on. A few good hits. Chance to ricochet. Two, deg two degrees only. Oof. I think I just bounced a couple of 20s again. Here come the torpedoes. Some gifts from the light cruisers. Flooding on the Utsugi. Not a priority target. Need to eliminate these guns. That is pretty much your only priority. Your only objective. Sink the Akagi. Missed. Now I can choose to open up and get all the guns involved, or I can try to use only two stern turrets, I think, to try and sink the Akagi. I'm going with the second approach because if I open up too much, those 20 inch guns from the Hiryu will rip me to shreds. And meanwhile, Utsugi is still trying to surround me in combination with the Naishi. But they're really not going to be able to do that much, I think. Two point si or 216 damage dealt. 268 damage dealt versus the almost 8,000 points of damage dealt by the uh, Maryland right now. That'll do. Steady as she goes. Another salvo out on Akagi, and missed. Structural integrity, 28%. I'm very, very happy that these guys don't have torpedoes. If they did, I would have been dead a long, long time ago. They're taking a lot of damage, these guys. But the Maryland is... Not going to be able to take down the hear you. It just has too much firepower. Accuracy, 17%. My accuracy is only 6%. Probably because I'm suffering from severe damage instability. Nine point three thousand damage done. And I think most of that, especially lately was done by my secondaries. The Naishi is now the new target, at least for the secondaries. Flooding, destroyed engine, no, destroyed, damaged rudder, funnel destroyed, secondary gun destroyed, rudder damaged. The Naishi is seeing this. Just constant shell fire. She's getting hit by three, four, five, and eight inch guns. And seeing as a heavy cruiser only has a maximum of 7.1 inch belt armor and 9.7 inch turret plus 110%, she is just not cut out for this. Now, seeing as my chances to sink the Akagi aren't great. Oh! I say that. How are you not dead? What the hell? Akaki must have a structural integrity of 0.01%. Because 
Because she is... She's set to 0%, but it's just enough to keep the ship alive. That's the only way that I can imagine that that ship is still afloat. The number is so low that the game decides to round it down instead of up to what it normally does at 0.1%. But she is still here. If somebody so much as sneezes on the Akagi or shoots her like that, she's gone. Nice, she will sink. The DDs haven't shown any interest in engaging. Flash fire on the Naishi. Now, it looks like the Japanese have done a lot of damage, but in fact they haven't. They've done 6,200 damage, most of which was inflicted against the other battleship, the one that sunk. And I've inflicted 14,000, 12,000 of which came out of the Maryland. So now it's a gun duel of myself commanding the Maryland versus the Hiryu. She still has plenty of shells, so trying to run away at 8 knots and hoping that she runs out of shells is not really an option. Uh, I just have to tough it out. Slug it out against the Hiryu. But my accuracy is dropping. What's the major factor in that? Uh, damage instability is 42%. Target fast speed? You mean 25 knots. Target fast speed. Yes, no, makes sense. She does take a bit of damage, but... Not really what I'm looking for. Chance to hit 2%. Good lord. Still, I have to keep focusing her. I'm turning out to starboard to try and get as many guns to fire as possible. And yes, that does open me up to more attacks from the Hiryu. And meanwhile, the uh, Kisokoma is... I don't even know what she's doing. She's fired a lot of shells. Didn't do that much damage. Hiryu taking another 20... 16 inch guns, or 16 inch shells, but not getting hit by any of them. Oh, this damage instability is gonna kill me. In combination, of course, with the Hiryu's 20 inch guns. And I think that even if I'm able to kill the battleship, even if that happens, oh, I managed to detonate the ammo, uh, the destroyers are going to just run away. Still, if I have sunk three, let's say 124,000 ton battleships and kept one of my ships alive, I'm going to declare victory. Because that is quite a feat. That is quite a feat indeed. That means I have sunk, what, 375,000 tons with um, 218 tons? Well, actually a little less because one of my ships actually survived. She's going to need a bit of time in the yard. I suppose we should prepare the dry dock, because the damage that we can see on the surface of the ship probably also translates to what happens below the waterline. And she might need a bit of work on her engines, but she's still fighting. Eighty-three percent. Here comes another salvo. Nine... no, sorry, seven point nine percent. Don't hit me, please. Yep, that hit me, but it didn't do that much damage. I'm turning too much now. Unable to bring all the guns to bear, I think. Let me check. Yeah, Stern's not firing. I'll make a poor turn again. Insofar as you can do that quickly at six knots. And because of all these turns, I'm slowing even more. Accuracy is going up a bit. We're at a whole three percent now. Now, my guns reload in 51.7 seconds, as opposed to the here use, which reload in 63 seconds, but they do significantly more damage. 48,762 versus 18,521. You have 12 barrels of those. Yep, that was another 93 point penetration on the Maryland. I'm also starting to flood, which is going to reduce my speed even more. 
Again, I can consider myself lucky that the AI does not know how to use their light cruisers properly. Maybe these things are set to screen? Because they're definitely not following the hear you. But if they had pushed in, they could have very easily torped my very, very wounded Maryland. And they would have won. Instead, we've been fighting for a bit over an hour. And I did two and a half thousand or two and a half times the damage that they did to me. Oh, beautiful. Another ammo detonation on here, you. Right through the mid of the deck. Which is not where they have any kind of turrets, at least not the mains. So maybe there was a bit of secondary ammo that detonated. That'd be my guess. We're down to 17%. Come on, Maryland. Speed's three knots. She's basically stopped at this point. 16% structural. I'm surprised I've been able to knock her down to 76%. That is a very positive surprise. I thought I was actually going to do a lot worse. But so far... Well, we're still here. That heavy cruiser is... Yeah, she's still being fired at by my 8-inch guns, but I'm not really holding out much hope to actually do a bit of damage to her. Because the 8-inch guns need to be close in order to pen that ship. And they're just not. Come on, 75%. I've been hit a few more times, now I'm down to 15% structure on my own. Those salvos do look good though. Incoming. Missed. That's not the full salvo, is it? Still 75. Their chance to hit me is so much better. 8.6% versus my 3. Then again, I'm barely moving. It's pretty much target practice for the Japanese. Come on. Send your turret into space. Nope, nothing. Some partial pens on the battle... Or sorry, on the, the heavy cruiser. Another 20-inch salvo coming my way. Structural holding at 15. Three points of damage. That's not going to cut it. Ricochet chance is really low. I'm hoping that I'm going to fly right through the deck armor. 28 degrees. So it's more likely to be pending the scythe than the deck. If it hits at all. But I just took another big hit. 101 damage. And a 10%. All I can hope for now is one more great hit somewhere in the, the bow or the stern damaging the turrets causing a flash fire but whereas we started at very close range we're now at 27 kilometers out and I don't think that it's going to be happening what is going to be happening is that I took another couple of 20 inch shells and I'm either going to flood or I'm just going to run out of structural integrity Maryland dished out more damage than she took, though. 13k dished out, 2.9k taken. Another hit from the 20-inch, but it barely penned. I don't think I've hit this ship in a long time. Nope, missed again. Come on. She is wasting a lot of ammunition, though. 753 left. I still have 880, I just don't have the structural integrity left to continue this fight for much longer. Otherwise I could try to drag it out, wait for the battleship to run out of ammo, push in, and get my accuracy and most importantly my pen a bit higher. But I don't think I can do it. Fuck it, all guns on the heavy cruiser. Let's have some fun. 0.8% chance to hit. <laughs> Q 
Shizokoma. Pretty familiar probably with getting splashes all around it. He's now seeing 16 inch splashes. Or splashes from 16 inch guns. Accuracy is coming up. Around 2%. Two and a half. Nothing though. 3%. But she keeps turning and zigzagging. It's a secondary hit. Oh, that's more like it. Flooding. Unfortunately, maximum bulkheads mean that the ship will barely slow down from that. But she is moving in a straight line. Oh. Cancel that. I completely lost sight of the battle... No, the, the light ships, the light cruisers are gone. Not sure exactly where they went. Come on here, you just finish it off. Put the Maryland out of her misery. Fire. Good damage again, as another 16 inch shell r hits a secondary gun and penetrates it. You're lucky the ammunition on that didn't go up. He's trying to run low on the 9 inch shell. The Hiryu is completely dictating when and where we fight, with her better speed and excellent accuracy. Versus my 1% <laughs> structural integrity. Oof. 1% chance to hit. What if I go for the battleship? Because it is a bigger target. Secondaries on the Kisukoma. 1.6. 4%? Wow. Did you suddenly learn to shoot? Or are you getting some sort of last stand bonus? It would make a great video if this thing suddenly blows up. 1%. Sneeze in the general direction of the Maryland and she dies. Ooh. Partial pen. It's not like the belt armor is that good, let alone the deck armor being that good. I did hit the battleship again. Yeah, she's down to 74. The more I damage her, the less her accuracy goes up. Or the, rather, the more her accuracy goes down, because she too will start to suffer from damage and stability. Another partial pen. She's down to 600 shells. She fired 400 shells already. Maryland refusing very, very stubbornly to sink. That's my chance to pen. Fifty-five. Hmm. Come on, ammo detonation, flash fire. Looks like I'm not getting either of those. 4% versus their 9%. I'm on fire. Structural is still holding at 1%. I think there's nothing left of the Maryland to destroy. She's limping around at 2 knots. Here you should have just pushed in. Seems to be the answer to everything. Just push in. And they're not doing it. Nope. Nope. Missed. 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 Over pen on the... <laughs> on the bow deck. Structural to 0.6. Well, screw it. You guys survived on 0.1. Or not even. You guys survived on 0% structural. So I demand that the Maryland's going to stay around for just a few more salvos. And hey, tonnage-wise, I already sunk more than I lost. I sunk two of their battleships and two, if not three, of their heavy cruisers. And that means that they are definitely down a lot more ships and definitely a lot more tonnage than I am. Kisokoma has completely expended her ammunition of the 9-inch guns. She's now effectively, well, either a light cruiser or a destroyer when it comes to armament. Here are you down to 69%. 
I'm still sitting at point six. <laughs> Unfortunately, my eight inch shell cash is expended. I only have 87 shells left. And I'm starting to run yellow on the 16 inch shells. Well, at least I can't say that the Maryland didn't go down fighting. When they eventually, provided that she doesn't just, doesn't just detonate, when they finally uh, start to excavate this ship, they send divers to the wreck of the Maryland, they're going to see that her ammunition stores were virtually empty. At least at the main guns. She still has 17,607 shells for the 3 inch guns, but there was never really anything that got too close to the ship to effectively use all that ammunition. Nevertheless, they did contribute. 456 damage, 683, 1650, 3271, and 74, sorry, 7402 on the mains. 68%. I'm surprised this is taking so long. 67%. She stopped firing? Oh, this is just keeping... Right. This is getting better and better. The battleship, under command of the AI, decided to cease fire because she was running uh, yellow on ammunition. If the AI figures that it's running low on ammo, it just ceases fire. Even though... With one decent hit, it doesn't even have to be a full pen. A half pen, an over pen could probably sink the Maryland. But the here you just stopped. Because of AI limitations. So somebody get the flex tape because the Maryland's going to need a few repairs. And who knows, maybe we can still sink that battleship. At that point, I will call it, because I'm going to be doing about, f well, little under 6 knots. And I refuse to chase down destroyers doing 37 knots. It's just not going to work. Shells are flying every which way. We are getting slightly closer. It was 27 half, it's now 26 half. But... Yep, another hit. <laughs> no way. Unfortunately, I cannot keep this up for long. I have about 12 salvos left, and then my shells are out. <laughs> 228 shells. Really bad choice by the AI to just cease fire. Because she just lost another 5% of her ship. She went down from 69% to 64%. And all she had to do was decide to shoot. You can see that the guns are eager to do so. They're all trained on the Maryland, but she's just refusing to fire. One of the tur turrets looking a bit worse for wear. It is yellow. The other ones look perfectly fine. How much armor do you have on the turrets? 16 inch rounded up. Plus 118%. <laughs> oh man. Yep, another hit. I have 168 shells left. Now I was talking shit about the heavy cruiser running out of ammo. And effectively becoming a destroyer gun wise but the Maryland's not too far off from that fate as well because in about five minutes I'll have run out of 152 shells remaining and that means that the 16s are out the 8s are out and that firepower wise at least caliber wise gives me the same firepower as a destroyer with 5 inch 4 inch and 3 inch guns except the destroyer usually travels a bit faster than 5 knots 128 shells, come on. Flash fire, please. 112. Maybe I should really start taking the increased complement of shells from now on as a standard. Because as somebody mentioned in a comment recently, I somehow always manage to run out of ammunition. 
or I start to run low on ammunition. And this battle is no different. Although I'm surprised I lasted more than two hours with a starting range of 9,000 and an overwhelming number of battleships. And most importantly, guns. 72 shells on Maryland. Missed. Everything missed. Come on, 64 shells. Come on, come on, come on. Nope. 56. Apparently we're not firing full salvos anymore. Maybe not all the guns can fire at the enemy. Here you down to 63%. 40 shells, that's two salvos if I fire all the guns. They still have light cruisers escorting that ship at a range of 28 kilometers out from the Maryland. Ah. 12 shells. If the Maryland effectively disengages and returns to port, I think that she's going to get scrapped right away. Because I don't think that 0.5% of structural integrity is worth saving. If she even makes it through the trip home. Because you could argue that, well, maybe a storm hits and the ship just takes on a bit too much water and sinks. Structural integrity is a fiddle thing. Anyway, I'm going to call it here. Uh, the battleship from the enemy has ceased fire. My battleship has gone silent because she ran out of ammunition. And she's effectively dead. Nevertheless, I'm going to claim victory for the US because I have sunk much, much more in the sense of tonnage than they have. Let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comment section, and I'll see you guys soon for the next video.